Bonjour tout le monde. Ok, this video is the fourth video. Ok, for l'étranger literature study. Uh, this is going to be for the chapter number four. Let's go and look at the question first. So, I remind you a little bit what happened in uh, chapter number uh, three. In chapter number three, we have had the description and the interaction of uh, a few more characters. In the order, we have Emmanuel, then after Celeste, Salamano, and the last one was Raymond Santes. Okay. Chapter number four is a follow-up on that. We're going to uh, we're going to be able to compare a little bit all those characters we have seen in chapter number three, as well as Merceau, and compare them a little bit. So there is a bit of a character development here. So first of all, as usual, you're going to summarize the chapter number four in 10 bullet points, the most relevant points you think there are. Okay. Question uh, number two, how does Emmanuel, okay, contrast with uh, Raymond? Okay. Remember the interaction <coughs> we have had with him when they were uh, running after this lorry to go have lunch at Celeste in chapter number three. So now, do you see, okay, some development with him? And because now we have some other characters, can you just uh, de uh, describe them and compare them? Numero trois, how would uh, uh, you describe Merceau's relation, uh, Merceau relationship with Marie Cardona? Okay, do you see any changes, positive, negative? Is there some stuff he has said and he has done which shocks you? Muroka, describe what happened in Raymond's flat. So you're going to see, don't need to say much more. Okay, it's very clear cut what's going to happen. Numero 5, uh, the relationship between Merceau and Raymond is taking a turn in chapter number 4. Remember what he has done for him in chapter number 3. So now I would like you to anticipate a little bit what was going to happen okay, in chapter number 5 and chapter number 6. Uh, worst case scenario, just try to think the basics. Is it going to go well? Is it going to go... Uh, bad. What kind of incident do you think, based on the information given, what do you think okay, is going to happen? Can you try to uh, forecast okay, what will happen in chapter number 5 and 6? Numero 6. What can you say about Salamano and his behavior in chapter number 4? Yes, uh, the character of Salamano with his uh, dog is taking a turn in this uh, chapter. And you're going to see that there is a purpose why he's doing this. We're going to be able to compare more specifically Salamano, but with um, with Merceau at this stage. I know they don't have the same life, okay? They're not the same age, but somehow it's almost like uh, they are one and the same. Numero 7. Why does Merceau think of his mother at the end of chapter number four? This is the end of chapter number four, this paragraph here, okay? And at some point, right here, he says, Je ne sais pas pourquoi j'ai pensé à maman. I didn't know why, but I thought, okay, about mommy. So why do you think he's doing that? Look at the context. What makes him think about his mom at this time? So now we're going to look at the vocabulary. Okay. So uh, the way I'm going to operate with uh, the vocab is going to be a bit same as usual i've pre i've, uh, I've pre prepared the work so i've highlighted all the things which i need to mention in terms of vocabulary so what i'm going to do is i am going to read it okay i'm going to stop at the end of uh, each sentences each paragraph or relevant section just to explain you what the vocabulary means and then after i'm going to go back okay and i'm going to highlight two, three, four important bits you have in this chapter. Okay, so. Chapitre numéro 4. J'ai bien travaillé toute la semaine. Raymond est venu et m'a dit qu'il avait envoyé la lettre. Je suis allé au cinéma deux fois avec Emmanuel. Deux fois avec Emmanuel, qui ne comprend pas toujours ce qui se passe sur l'écran. Il faut alors lui donner des explications. Hier, c'était samedi, et Marie est venue. Comme nous étions, comme nous en étions, nous, euh, comme nous en étions convenus, j'ai eu très envie d'elle. 
parce qu'elle avait une belle robe à raies rouges et blanches et des sandales de cuir. On devinait ses seins durs et le brun du soleil lui faisait un visage de fleurs. Convenu, as, uh, as expected, as planned, et j'ai eu très envie, comme de verbe avoir très envie, to fancy, ré. So that has two meanings, that's a noun. Une ré is a stingray, so the fish, the flatfish, or it is a stripe. Notice how the stripe are red and white. Queer. Queer is a leather. On devinait ses seins durs. Saint is the bosom, the breast of a woman. Lui faisait un visage de fleur. Ok, so, le brun du soleil lui faisait un visage de fleur. A face like a flower. What reference does he make here? Is it a flower as the shape, the color, ok, or the symbol of it? Nous avons pris le bus... Nous avons pris un autobus et nous sommes allés à quelques kilomètres d'Alger sur une plage resserrée entre des rochers et bordée de roseaux du côté de la terre. Resserré. Resserré comme from serré, which means squeezed. OK. So, here has a connotation of it's not very wide, it's not very big. Rocher. Rocher means rocks. So, I remind you that pierre means a stone. OK. The difference between a stone and a rock is the size of it. OK. Roseau. Roseau means reed or reeds. Le soleil de 4 heures n'était pas trop chaud, mais l'eau, mais l'eau était tiède avec de petites vagues longues et paresseuses. Vagues. Waves. Marie m'a, euh, euh, Marie m'a pris un jeu. Il fallait, en nageant, boire à la crête des vagues, accumuler dans sa bouche toute l'écume et se mettre ensuite sur le dos pour la projeter contre le ciel. Cela faisait alors, euh, cela faisait alors une dentelle mousseuse qui disparaissait dans l'air ou me retombait en pluie tièdre sur le visage. Mais au bout de quelques temps, j'avais la bouche brûlée par l'amertume du sel. La crête. La crête means the peak. So you can use that for a mountain, a hill. La crête d'une montagne. But here we're talking about the peak of the waves. Okay, so basically this is the tip tip of the waves. The one you see is, uh, it's got this kind of, um, uh, it's whitish. And uh, this is exactly what he's talking about because now he's talking, la crête des vagues is where we have a lécume, the froth of the wave. Contre le ciel, against the sun. Cela faisait une dentelle mousseuse. OK. Dental means lace. OK. So intricate kind of sewing job. Tied. Tied was used also here. OK. Tied means lukewarm. So something which is neither hot or cold. Au bout de quelques temps. After a while. At the end of some times. Au bout, this is the end of an object, such as a rope. Au bout de la corde. Ok. J'avais la bouche brûlée, burnt, par l'amertume. L'amertume means a bitterness. Remember that cell means salt. Marie m'a rejoint et s'est collée collé à moi dans l'eau. Elle a mis sa bouche contre la mienne. Sa langue rafraîchissait mes lèvres, et nous nous sommes roulés dans les vagues pendant un moment. Coller. To glue. Se coller, ok, is to glow against one another. So what we want, what we were saying here, is they are basically hugging each other. Long, this is the tongue. And lèvres, these are the lips of the mouth. Nous nous sommes rhabillés sur la plage. Marie me regardait avec des yeux brillants. Je l'ai embrassée. À partir de ce moment, nous n'avons plus parlé. Je l'ai tenue contre moi et nous avons été pressés de trouver un autobus, de rentrer, d'aller chez moi et de nous jeter sur mon lit. 
j'avais laissé ma fenêtre ouverte, et c'était bon de sentir la nuit d'été couler sur nos corps bruns. Les yeux brillants, brillants from the verb briller, to shine, to spark, embrasser, to kiss, so je l'ai embrassé, I kissed her. Je l'ai tenu, tenir, to hold, so I held her. Pressé, pressé is used usually for uh, fruit and uh, pressing to squeeze something. Okay, but here as an expression, être pressé means to be in a rush. Nous jeter, je n'ai to throw. Nous jeter to throw ourselves on the bed. Couler, couler means to run, but running like water, a liquid running somewhere, not running like a man, an athlete running. Et nos corps, you can recognize corpse. This is a body. Ce matin, Marie est restée et je lui et je lui ai dit que nous déjeunerions ensemble. Je suis descendu pour acheter de la viande. En remontant, j'ai entendu une voix de femme dans la chambre de Raymond. Un peu après, le vieux Salamano a grondé son chien. Nous avons entendu un bruit de semelles et de grippes sur les marches en bois de l'escalier et puis salaud. Charogne. Ils sont sortis dans la rue. J'ai raconté à Marie l'histoire du vieux et elle a ri. Elle avait un de mes pyjamas dont elle avait retroussé les manches. Quand elle a ri, j'ai eu encore envie d'elle. Remonter. So, monter. To go up. Remonter. To go back up. Une voix de femme. The voice of a woman. Gronder. Gronder is to tell of someone or Ouais, to tell off someone. So, gronder son chien is to tell off his dog. Kind of. It's not insulting. Is to tell him them off or to criticize. Semelle. Semelle are the soles of a shoe. Griff. The clothes. Sur les marches en bois. Marche. The steps. En bois. That's a material. Wood. So, here we have un bruit de semelle et de griffes sur les marches en bois. A noise of Shoe soles and clothes on the, on the wooden steps of the staircase. Retrousser. Retrousser is to roll up. Okay, to roll up something. And here we have manche, which means sleeves. So roll up sleeves. Quand elle arrive, j'ai eu encore envie d'elle. Un moment après, elle m'a demandé si je l'aimais. Je lui ai répondu que cela ne voulait rien dire, mais qu'il me semblait que non. Elle a eu l'air triste. Mais en préparant le déjeuner, et à propos de rien, elle a encore ri de telle façon que je l'ai embrassée. C'est à ce moment que les bruits d'une dispute ont éclaté chez Raymond. So I will come back to that. That is not really for the vocabulary. It's more like something which happening okay, and needs to be discussed. So I will come back to that. Afterwards, éclaté, éclaté, something which bursts. Okay, so we have an argument which is bur has burst at Raymond. On a d'abord entendu une voix aiguë de femme, et puis Raymond qui disait :« Tu m'as manqué, tu m'as manqué. Je vais t'apprendre à me manquer. » Quelques bruits sourds et la femme a hurlé, mais de si terrible façon qu'immédiatement le palier cet empli de monde. Okay. So, what do we have here? Let me just go back here, there. Une voix aiguë. Aiguë, sharp or high pitch. So, une voix aiguë de femme, a high pitch voice of a woman. Sourd. So, we have to be careful. This one. So can be used as an adjective, okay, or also a noun, okay. So être sourd to be deaf. Un sourd is a deaf person. But we can use that as well if we talk about noise. This deafening sound is a very quiet 
sound, des bruits sourds, so very quiet sound. Hurler, hurler to scream or to howl. Le palier, le palier, this is the landing, the doorstep. Here, referring to the landing, the, the floor where Meursault lives. Empli de monde. So we can have, you have remplir. Remplir means to fill something up. Okay, so empli de monde, full of people. Marie et moi, nous sommes sortis. La femme criait toujours et Raymond, fra... et Raymond frappait toujours. Marie m'a dit que c'était terrible et je n'ai rien répondu. Elle m'a demandé d'aller chercher un agent, mais je lui ai dit que je n'aimais pas les agents. Pourtant, il en est arrivé un avec le locataire du deuxième qui est plombier. So I've highlighted toujours twice because it's not used okay, here as an adverb, uh, as an expression of time, like always, is used as an adverb, which means still. The woman, okay, was still shouting. Et Raymond frappait. Frappait means to hit. Okay, like I'm hitting the table. Avec le locataire. Le locataire is the tenant, someone occupying a flat or a house. Plombier. This is a job. You can possibly recognize a plumber. Il a frappé à la porte et on n'a plus rien entendu. Il a frappé plus fort et au bout d'un moment, la femme a pleuré. Raymond a ouvert. Il avait une cigarette à la bouche et l'air doucereux. La fille s'est précipitée à la porte et a déclaré à l'agent que Raymond l'avait frappé. « Ton nom ?» a dit l'agent. Raymond a répondu. « Enlève ta cigarette de la bouche quand tu me parles, » a dit l'agent. Raymond a hésité, m'a regardé et a tiré sur sa cigarette. La femme a pleuré, pleuré to cry, a ouvert, ouvrir to open. Doucereux, so doucereux come from the, 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 the adjective do which means either soft or sweet, but not uh, sweet as something which is full of sugar, okay? Like sweet, like someone who uh, has a sweet nature, okay? So, l'air doucereux, to have an air of sweetness. So, basically, what we have is to contrast with what Raymond has just before. La fille s'est précipitée. Se précipiter is to rush. Enlève ta cigarette. Enlever to remove. Ok. A tirer sur sa cigarette. Tirer to draw. Ok. But here he has drawn okay, some smoke out of his cigarette. À ce moment, l'agent l'a giflé à toute volée, d'une claque épaisse et lourde en pleine joue. La cigarette est tombée quelques mètres plus loin. Raymond a changé de visage. Mais il n'a rien dit sur le moment, et puis il a demandé d'une voix humble s'il pouvait ramasser son mégot. La gifler. So we're going to see this uh, not verb, but that transform into a noun, une gifle. Gifler means to smack someone. Okay? So basically to give a slap. To smack someone. À toute volée. As hard as, here as hard as he could. Une claque. Une claque is a slap. Épaisse, thick, lourd, heavy. So now he's describing the slap, which is a thick and heavy slap. That means basically he has, okay, hit him with all his might. Okay. En pleine joue. So the joue is a cheek, like the cheek you have on your face. So he slapped him on the cheek. But now en pleine. Plein means full. Now, if you see this expression en plein or en pleine, in the masculine form or feminine form, that means right in the middle. So, for example, if you say right in the middle of the night, I woke up, en pleine nuit, je me suis réveillé. In the middle of a street, en pleine rue, en pleine route. Okay, so you can use that, masculine or feminine, to say in the middle of. That's an expression. Plus loin, 
more far. So farther, further. Et son mego. So here you have to be careful because mego, if you look for it, it means the, cig the butt of a cigarette. So that's a filter. But you can use that, okay, as an expression slang to refer to the cigarettes. So here, ramasser son mego is to pick up his cigarettes. L'agent a déclaré qu'il le pouvait. Et il a ajouté, mais la prochaine fois, tu sauras qu'un agent n'est pas un guignol. Pendant ce temps, la fille pleurait. Et elle a répété, il m'a tapé, c'est un macro. Monsieur l'agent a demandé alors, Raymond, c'est dans la loi ça, de dire macro à un homme Mais l'agent lui a ordonné de fermer sa gueule. Raymond s'est alors retourné vers la fille et lui a dit « Attends, petite, on se retrouvera. » L'agent lui a dit de fermer ça, que la fille devait partir et lui rester dans sa chambre en attendant d'être convoqué au commissariat. Un guignol. Un guignol is the equivalent of Punch and Judy. You know the puppet show? So it is a reference to that. Okay, a puppet. So what are you saying like? An agent, a policeman, is not a puppet, it means is not a fool or a clown. Tapé. So tapé means to, uh, uh, to hit something, but it is like a tap you give on the table. Okay. It is a very gentle, okay, like a tap, like you're typing something on the computer. Right. So it's quite interesting because before we had frappé, which means literally to hit someone, So, an EQV call, it means like, you know, using violence. But tapé is something more gentle. Il m'a tapé. C'est un macro. Un macro is, has two meanings. The first meaning is a macro. So that's the fish. But it is also the slang word for a pimp. I remind you that a pimp, if you don't know where it is, is someone who uh, looks after prostitutes. I mean, allegedly protecting them but they work for the uh, they work for the pimp and give him some money for their protection it's part of the mafia to be honest with you. it's illegal to be a pimp la loi the law you can use it as well the rules ferme sa gueule so you have to be careful for this one here ferme sa gueule is to shut your gob okay so depending if you want to be polite or not ferme ta gueule Shut your gob casual, ferme sa gueule, shut his or her gob or one's gob. So it's quite, it's quite strong. Don't use that unless you want to have a strong reaction from a French person. Ferme ça. So that is reference to this. Okay. De fermer ça to shut it. So shutting his mouth. Être convoqué. Convoqué is to be called. To be, to, 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 to have a, a Um, uh, an invitation, okay, so to be called, and commissaire is the police office. Il a ajouté que Raymond devrait avoir honte d'être sous au point de trembler, trembler comme il le faisait. À ce moment, Raymond lui a expliqué, je ne suis pas sous, monsieur l'agent, seulement je suis là, devant vous, et je tremble, c'est forcé. Il a fermé sa porte et tout le monde est parti. Marie et moi avons fini de préparer le déjeuner, mais elle n'avait pas faim. J'ai presque tout mangé. Elle est partie à une heure et j'ai dormi un peu. Avoir honte. To be ashamed. So remember, uh, remind you that there is all the expression you have in English. To be thirsty, uh, to be hungry, to be scared, etc., etc. You use the expression to be, but in French it says to have. Like here you have to have shame. Être sous. We don't pronounce the L unless it is used as with the adjective, with the, with the, as a, um, as a verb. Souler. Être sous is to be drunk. Trembler. Trembler, uh, trembling, okay, to shake. C'est forcé. C'est forcé is an expression, okay, to be forced, okay, or here in this context, it can't be helped, okay, I am obliged to, re to react like that. Vers trois heures, on a frappé à ma porte et Raymond est entré. Je suis resté couché 
Et il s'est assis sur le bord de mon lit. Il est resté un moment sans parler. Et je lui ai demandé comment son affaire s'était passée. Il m'a raconté qu'il avait fait ce qu'il voulait, mais qu'elle lui avait donné une gifle et qu'alors il l'avait battue. Pour le reste, je l'avais vu. Je lui ai dit qu'il me semblait que maintenant elle était punie et qu'il devait être, être content. C'était aussi son avis. Et il a observé que l'agent avait beau faire, il ne changera rien au coup qu'elle avait reçu. Assis au bord de mon lit, au bord de la mer, on the, uh, on the seaside, on the side of the bed here. Une gifle. So gifler to smack someone, une gifle. Et ce slap or smack. Avoir, avait beau faire. Ok. Avoir beau faire is when you're putting another effort into something. Ok. J'ai beau faire de la natation. Ok. I do a lot of swimming. J'ai beau faire du travail. I'm doing a lot of work. Changerai rien au coup. Un coup is a hit. A hit like someone hitting you. Okay. Is more related to a hand kind of uh, hitting. Il a ajouté qu'il connaissait bien les agents et qu'il savait comment il fallait s'y prendre avec eux. Il m'a demandé alors si j'avais attendu qu'il réponde à la gifle de l'agent. J'ai répondu que je n'attendais rien du tout et que d'ailleurs je n'aimais pas les agents. Raymond a eu l'air très content. Il m'a demandé si je voulais sortir avec lui. Je me suis levé et j'ai commencé à me peigner. Il m'a dit qu'il fallait que je lui serve de témoin. Moi, cela m'était égal, mais je ne savais pas ce, qui, ce que je devais dire. Selon Raymond, il suffisait de déclarer que la fille lui avait manqué. J'ai accepté okay, de lui servir de témoin. D'ailleurs, besides, me peigner. To comb one's hair. So here he is combing his hair. Un témoin. Témoin is a witness. Someone who's witnessing something. Cela m'est égal. In a present and ça m'est égal. I'm not bothered. I don't mind. Cela m'était égal. I didn't mind. I'm going to come back to this uh, bit here afterwards because that's quite interesting in terms of the development of them too. Nous sommes sortis. Et Raymond m'a offert une m'a offert une fine. Puis il a voulu faire une partie de billard et j'ai perdu de justesse. Il voulait ensuite aller au bordel, mais j'ai dit non parce que je n'aime pas ça. Alors nous sommes rentrés doucement et il me disait combien il était content d'avoir réussi à punir sa maîtresse. Je le trouvais très gentil avec moi et j'ai pensé que c'était un Bon moment. Une fine is an expression for a beer. Une partie de billard. Snooker game. Playing pool. De justesse. Nearly. I nearly lost. Au bordel. Au bordel is a brothel. Donc, okay, a brothel for the people who don't know that is a place, usually a building, a house where uh, prostitutes work safely. Uh, it's illegal nowadays, 21st century, but uh, earlier, okay, in the 20th century, earlier, uh, early 1900, they were uh, widespread around Europe, etc. Doucement. So remember, do. Gentle or softly. So here is gently. Okay. Slowly. Softly. Punir. To punish. A mistress. A mistress. Or uh, a partner. Okay. A woman or a man. You hear as a woman. I'll come back to that afterwards. De loin, j'ai aperçu sur le, bas de, le pas de la porte le vieux Salamano qui avait l'air agité. Quand nous nous sommes rapprochés, j'ai vu qu'il n'avait pas son chien. Il regardait de tous les côtés, tournait sur lui-même, tentait de percer le noir du couloir, marmonnait des mots sans suite et recommençait à fouiller la rue de ses petits yeux rouges. 
avoir l'air agité. To look like to seem. Agité, agitated or stress. Nous sommes rapprochés. Proche, near, close. Rapprochés, to get close. A verb. De tous les côtés. All sides. Tourner sur lui-même. To turn around himself. Tenter de percevoir. Tenter to attempt, to try, percer, to pierce. Percer le noir du couloir, try to attempt to pierce, okay, the darkness of the corridor. Marmonner, et c'est un ER verb marmonner, to uh, mumble. Sans suite. Without any meaning, without any significance, okay. Fouiller. Fouiller is another word to search. Ok. Quand Raymond lui a demandé ce qu'il avait, il n'a pas répondu tout de suite. J'ai vaguement entendu qu'il murmurait « salaud, charogne ». Et il continuait à s'agiter. Je lui ai demandé où était son chien. Il m'a répondu brusquement qu'il était parti. Et puis, tout d'un coup, il a parlé avec volubilité. Vaguement. Vaguely, adverb here. Murmurer, okay, is to whisper something. It's not the same as mumbling. Mumbling is, you can say that quite loud, okay, but the word you are uh, saying can't be heard very, very well. Murmurer is very clear what you're saying, but you're saying very, very quietly. Brusquement, suddenly, brusquely. Et puis tout d'un coup. And then, all of a sudden, parler avec volubilité. Volubilité, okay, it's uh, to, here is to speak with ease, without stopping. Je l'ai emmené au champ de manœuvre, comme d'habitude. Il y avait du monde autour des baraques foraines. Je me suis arrêté pour regarder le roi de l'évasion. Et quand j'ai voulu repartir, il n'était plus là. Bien sûr, il y avait longtemps que je voulais lui acheter un collier moins grand, mais je n'aurais jamais cru que cette charogne pourrait partir comme ça. Barak, another word for a stall or a house. Foreign, from foreign, playground. Uh, sorry, fairground. So here we have basically fairground stalls. Le roi de l'évasion. The king of escapism. Escapism is basically someone who evades from any kind of prison. Un collier is a collar. So, un collier for un chien is a collar for a dog. Un collier could be if you're referring to a human being, such as it becomes a necklace. Raymond lui a expliqué alors que le chien avait pu s'égarer et qu'il allait revenir. Il lui a cité des exemples de chiens qui avaient fait des dizaines de kilomètres pour retrouver leur maître. Malgré cela, le vieux a eu l'air plus agité. Mais ils me le prendront, vous comprenez Si encore quelqu'un le recueillait, mais ce n'est pas possible. Il dégoûte tout le monde avec ses croûtes. Les agents le prendront, c'est sûr. S'égarer. To get lost. So I know you have seen the verb perdre. Perdre is to lose something. If you want to use it as you lost yourself, you have to use a reflexive form. Se perdre. Je me suis perdu. Je me perds. Or, otherwise, you can say égaré. Citer. Citer is to cite something, to say something. Il lui a cité. He told him some examples. Un maître. Maître is a master. That's funny because we had maîtresse before. Maîtresse means a mistress or a mistress like a master, but feminine. And here we have the word maître, which is master or the owner. Okay. So it's weird because last time we uh, we refer to that as the name, enfin, as the title of Raymond's girlfriend, sa maîtresse. So if she is a maîtresse, mistress, that makes Raymond as a dog. Now that's just a little, you know thought about it. Malgré cela, despite this or that. 
le recueillir. Cueillir, IR verb, regular, means to pick, like picking flowers, picking fruit. So recueillir, to pick again. Je lui ai dit alors qu'il devait aller à la fourrière et qu'on le lui rendrait moyen, euh, moyennant le paiement de quelques droits. Il m'a demandé si ses droits étaient élevés. Je ne savais pas. Alors il s'est mis en colère. Il s'est mis en colère. Donner de l'argent pour cette charogne Ah Il peut bien crever. Et il s'est mis à l'insulter. Raymond Henry et a pénétré dans la maison. À la fourrière, the dog pound. So the dog refuse. Moyennant. Uh, here, so you can reckon a moyen. Taille, uh, moyen is a mean. Taille moyenne means average or uh, average like average size. And now, moyenne is something you use to pay something. Okay, so here we have they will return it to him. It, the dog, him, Salamano, returned against the payment of some fees. Okay, un droit is a right, but here used as a fee. Remember the language used is a language used in 1940s. Il m'a demandé si ses droits étaient élevés. Enfin, élevés, high, so expensive. Crever. Crever, usually used for a balloon or a tire, which means to burst. But here used as an expression to say to die. Il peut bien crever. He can die. Raymond Henry est pénétré dans la maison. So, penetrate, to penetrate, to get inside. So, getting inside the house. Je l'ai suivi et nous nous sommes quittés sur le palier de l'étage. Un moment après, j'ai entendu le pas du vieux et il a frappé à ma porte. Quand j'ai ouvert, il est resté à un moment sur le seuil. Et il m'a dit, excusez-moi, monsieur. Euh, « Excusez-moi, excusez-moi. » Je l'ai invité à entrer, mais il n'a pas voulu. Il regardait la pointe de ses souliers, et ses mains croûteuses tremblaient. J'ai entendu le pas du vieux. Le pas, be careful, we can see a noun, uh, you can see the article here, so pas is a noun, that's not negative, le pas is a step. Le seuil, le seuil is anything's threshold. Okay, or the doorstep. So here, this is a doorstep, okay, but on the threshold of his house, of his flat. Il regardait la pointe de ses souliers. La pointe, the tip, un soulier, a uh, posh word for shoes, the tip of his shoes. Ses mains croûteuses tremblaient. Hands, croûte, scab, tremblaient, shaking. His scabby hands were shaking. Sans me faire face, il m'a demandé. Sans me faire face, il m'a demandé. Ils ne vont pas me le prendre, dit Monsieur Meursault. Ils vont me le rendre. Ou qu'est-ce que je vais devenir Je lui ai dit que la fourrière gardait les chiens trois jours à la disposition de leur propriétaire et qu'ensuite elle en faisait ce que bon lui semblait. Il m'a regardé en silence. Puis il m'a dit bonsoir. Il a fermé sa porte et je l'ai entendu aller et venir. Son lit a craqué. Et au petit et au bizarre petit bruit qui a traversé la cloison, j'ai compris qu'il pleurait. Je ne sais pas pourquoi j'ai pensé à maman, mais il fallait que je me lève tôt le lendemain. Je n'avais pas faim et je me suis couché sans dîner. Ce que bon lui semblait. Whatever feels good to you. That's an expression. So he had cracked. His bed creaked or cracked. So basically that's a noise. Traverser. To go through. La cloison. A partition or a wall. And too early. Okay, so now we're going to go back, okay, to... Uh, Uh, three, four section of this uh, chapter, just to clarify a couple of things. 
Right, there is uh, nothing too difficult on the uh, uh, first section here. Uh, descriptions of, uh, you know, given by Merceau. Nothing to worry about here. I find that quite interesting, okay? This section here, okay? The way he's describing his relationship with uh, Marie. You can see that everything is quite physical. Okay, especially here, you know, she basically got against me, her mouth, she, uh, she stuck her mouth against mine. Okay, the word lips, tongue. So you can see it's very, very, very physical. So much so, okay, you understand very well why Merso describe it like that. So they just finished bathing and look what he says here. Okay. Nous avons été pressés de trouver un autobus, de rentrer, d'aller chez moi et de nous jeter sur mon lit. J'avais mal laissé ma fenêtre ouverte et c'était bon de sentir la nuit d'été couler sur nos corps bruns. Physically, just talking about the, uh, the kind of uh, sensation he has. We were, okay, very, very rushed to find a bus, go back home, return to my house to throw ourselves on the bed. Okay, so... As before, it was described kind of nicely, colors and stuff. Now we have something here which is very straight to the point. Why this section here is interesting, it's uh, because of what is happening just back to back. So, un moment après, Elle m'a demandé si je l'aimais. Je lui ai répondu que cela ne voulait rien dire, mais qu'il me semblait que non. Elle a eu l'air triste. A moment later, she asked me if I loved her. I replied to her that it meant nothing, but I thought that no, I didn't like, I didn't love her. She seemed sad. And look what is happening after. But while preparing the lunch, and all of a sudden, about nothing, she laughed again in such a way that I kissed her. So here, you should stop for a second because they're written back to back. But it denotes a kind of uh, psychological description of my. She went from sadness to happiness. How does it make you feel? What is, how was she triggered? in doing this, okay? Afterwards, we describe Raymond. So you can notice that, you know, everything is a kind of uh, contrasting. You have Merso and, uh, you have Merso and, um, uh, what's her name? Marie here, and you have Raymond there. And they're all very contrasting the way they are basically Okay, describing the situation, the way that they relate to a woman as well. So, noticed now, the thing which is interesting is to compare Merso with everyone else. Okay, so what do we see, what do we see with uh, Marie? How does she react to the fact that Raymond, okay, has beaten her up? his girlfriend. How does the neighbors, okay, like for example, the plumber, how does, okay, the policeman comes and react? How do they all react? And look at how, okay, Merso react. Mary told me it was terrible, but I didn't say anything. She asked me to go and fetch a policeman, but I told her that I didn't like policemen. Is it a good reaction? It's a normal reaction. Okay. Now we can see that uh, Raymond has lost all his bravado once the policeman talks to him and slapped him with all his might. It's almost like he's put it back to his place. This bit here is quite interesting. Look at how Raymond trying to justify himself. Okay. Just yes, 
I am shaking now because I have to shake in front of a policeman. This is, it's almost like telling him, like, it's not suppo- what I'm supposed to do. Okay. I'm supposed to be scared in front of you. But he's shaking in front of a policeman, figure of authority. The same way as the, the girl is just, <clears throat> he's just basically abused and beat up. Okay. He's shaking in front of him. Um, oh, yes, here. So Mary has gone. She was disgusted. So much, uh, she was so disgusted that she couldn't eat. And Mercer didn't have any remorse eating. Okay. And then Raymond comes to see Mercer after Mary has left. And look at the vocabulary they're using. She's punished and Raymond should be happy. Okay. The agent will not change anything what has happened. Raymond knows well policemen. Okay. He's pushing the cheek. Okay. Raymond asks Berso, were you expecting me okay to retaliate after the the agent slapped me and Raymond uh, Merceau said I replied that I wasn't expecting anything and that besides I didn't like agent the same thing as he said to Marie who has got a very different different reaction Raymond seems to be very happy with himself and when Raymond tells him do you want to go out straight away stand up comb his hair and go out when Raymond asked him I need a witness to show that she was unfaithful Raymond said uh, uh, Merceau says what do you have to say and he accepts it so we have a very very weird situation everyone on the landing on the floor of Merceau have seen what has happened and uh, I remind you that Raymond has a reputation of being a pimp okay in a neighborhood has a bad reputation. I remind you that as well, Merso has a bad reputation because he's left his mom in old people's home. And all of a sudden, it's almost like now they're becoming best mates. United in the hatred people give them. And interesting about uh, Merso, in comparison with uh, Raymond, Raymond doesn't like going to the brothel. We can say that he has no problem getting girls or women, well, as we can see with Marie. But if Raymond needs to have a violent relationship with women in order to get them, so now you understand why he needs to go to the brothel. That is a horrible uh, section here. Why? Because we have, based on what happened before, Look at what Raymond uh, uh, Merceau says. And we return home slowly, gently. And he told me how much he was happy to have succeeded in punishing his mistress. I found him very nice with me. And I thought it was a nice, I was spending a nice moment, some nice time with him. So here I'm going to let you just... <clears throat> Uh, ruminate, think about this, okay? We have uh, Salamano, who obviously has lost uh, his dog. And we can see that he's quite, uh, you know, withdrawn about it, he's quite stressed about it. M- uh, Raymond found that is cruel because he laughs at him. But you can see this is Merceau who try, okay, to make him feel better, saying like someone will have picked him up, the policeman were going to keep him for three days, etc., etc. But what is interesting is this, okay, from the moment he doesn't have his dog and someone talks to him, okay, he talks with ease. Before, the only interaction we had between Merceau and his neighbor was Salo Charoy and when they were on chapter number three on the doorstep. 
Merce, uh, Salamano refused to speak to him. But now the dog is not here. He starts to make full sentences. Okay, and explain everything. Here I found that very ironic what happened. So the old man has gone to uh, the fun fair, the fairground, to see a show called The King of Escapism. And who was the really king of escapism? But that was his dog. Why? Because he escaped. I think it's ironic. Uh, yes, and now we're going to go to the last, 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 last bit. Okay, so we have a proper conversation with Merso and Salamano. Probably it never happened, but it's quite endearing. Ask him if he wants to get inside the flat. Salamano says no. Look, he's looking at his the tip of his shoes like he's ashamed of himself, like a kid who's done something bad. And uh, genuinely, genuinely caring for his dog and try to think about when and how he's going to get it back. But the thing which is interesting is, at the end, Mercer recognized that through the partition, okay, he can hear Salamano crying. And the fact he's crying makes him think about his mom. And he doesn't know why, but he thinks about his mom. So he's making a, an analogy. But brush it off very quickly by saying, oh, I have to get up early in the morning and goes to bed without dining. So it's interesting the fact that he, is, he goes to bed without dining because he is, obviously, he's not hungry. Why is he hungry? Is he disgusted? We know that a mercer doesn't get disgusted very, uh, very easily. Why? Because he saw a woman be beaten, uh, to be beaten, okay, and then after he has his lunch plus his girlfriend's lunch. Marie was disgusted and she left. She voiced her disgust. Here, looks like Merceau is disgusted after he's thought about his mom. After he has a chat with Salamano. Possibly because we describe again the hand, the scabby hands of Salamano. Probably he's disgusted by that. But I don't think so. I think that Salamano has lost his dog like Merso has lost his mom. Okay? So this is a parallel. This is the comparison here. Okay? Merso doesn't know why he thought about his mom. He, but his subconscious knows why. Because he sees a man who's lost without, okay, his companion. And before Merso was with anyone else, he used to share his flat with his mom. Okay, so I hope you find it uh, helpful. You take care of yourself, guys. And uh, I will see you uh, next week. Bye.